Hello. Hey, guys. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Nice to see you guys. I'm really looking forward to yeah. hearing more about your new wine mm -hmm. with um, Della Valle in, in Napa. We've, we've, we've been speaking for, for a couple of years now. I mean, it's not exactly the, the, the first wine we've made. We're at the fourth win vintage now, so mm -hmm. decided not to release the very first one. And now, well, we're excited because that's the first... Uh, well, it's happening. It's really happening live and physically so now. So the first... Uh, the first one we've been doing together in a project that has started in our brains quite quite a few years ago. So yeah. how how did the how did I don't think many people know about it. Obviously I knew about it because I'm mm. you know I have some friends that knew about it but I was sworn to secrecy. Um so <laughs> but what what um you know how did it come about? It's, it's one of those uh friendships between winemakers that come up because of um you know, uh, us meeting both Naok and Maya. Maya doing an internship at Online 2013. Um, and, you know, when, when winemakers uh, start to build up a friendly relationship, it very often ends up making a wine together. It's, it's, it's probably as simple as that. I like that. I mean, there's, there's more to that because obviously it's not just Friendship is also when you when you start to know each other and seeing some sort of links and similarities. I mean, we had uh, a similar approach to things. We're sharing the same consultant. There's the link to Italy, obviously, because Maya's father, as I think you well know, was Italian. Yes. So there were there were a lot of things that 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 uh, we felt um, were in place to 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 make a wine together. Apart from our excitement to do something in Napa, because I think uh, it's very hard to resist for anybody who goes to the valley to sooner or later uh, envisage to to make a wine there, because it just get infected by all the sense of energy of, 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 of and just you know the magic of the place with all its uh, contradictions. But but I find it very hard. I mean, when I when I when I uh, when I first went to to, to Napa, it was with a certain, you know, dose of European skepticism, but then you go to the place and you cannot help but fall in love with it and tell what, 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 what way can I find to somehow make a wine there? And, and, and well, we found the Dalla Valles. We were able to convince them that it was a good idea to make, to, to make uh, a wine together. We knew we didn't want to make it completely on our own and come as con conquerors and people, you know, from good old Europe, uh, teaching the Californians how to make wine. So we, we, I think we entered the whole thing with a, with a, with a pinch of humility and uh, wanted to have somebody from the place sort of guide us and, and make us learn how to, how to make the best possible wine there. But from um, your side, Maya and, and Miyoko, what, 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 what intrigued you about making wines with the uh, Ornelia and um, Axel and, um, the fresco baldies for us like axel mentioned we had a long time standing friendship with each other but then um for me working at ornelia that was my first international um internship and then uh doing my training in bordeaux at the same school that axel went to and then he ended up being actually my mentor for uh, my thesis and then just having this, be able to keep this tie to old world, obviously my father was Italian and I had this natural draw to old world, but I'm born and raised in, in Napa Valley. So it seemed like a perfect opportunity to explore that dichotomy between the two, you know, old world versus new and doing something very different um, from what each of us do respectively in our own estates. What do you think, uh, what are some obvious things that you learned in making wines together? Naturally, we both work with Bordeaux varietals, so we both have a very strong background in um, working with, you know, Cabaret Sauvignon, Cabaret Franc Merlot. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to send, have this, like we always talk about having this kind of Italian sensibility and then working with this Napa terroir, right? So being able to you know, use our respective know-hows and really be able to select sites 
and work with the wines um, very closely. Uh, Axel and I work together to make the wines during harvest. I consult with him very frequently and being able to really pair along um, both what we understand and what we believe is the best representation for, for the sites and, and what we're trying to create. So you never found that you were really at odds, like, oh, I want to pick later. Oh, you don't get it. In California, we do this or, you know, a few moments like that. That didn't really happen. Well, well, you know, the thing is, James, uh, uh, being on the other side of the pond, I have to put a dose of trust in both my uh, my and Naoka <laughs> at some point. Because of course. It, it's not that, that, that. But no, I think we, we've had similar, we've had similar uh background in a certain way and a lot of uh, things in common in terms of our philosophy and our approach. Uh, Maya worked with us in 2013. So, so, so uh, there was a sense of feeling that we would, we would mutually trust and, 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 and go, go down the same path. Then afterwards, it's always, it's always interesting to see how, uh, again, your preconceptions can be turned upside down and, you know, as a, as a European, you come to Napa, you say, yeah, Napa, it's extreme, it's hot. And then you find out that, you know, in a vintage like 2018, which we're going to to, to discover together, um, well, um, I was actually quite jealous because it was so much cooler uh, actually in Napa than, uh, than, than it was... Uh, than it was in Bulgari in the same in the very same vintage. And the other thing mm. is, it's as always. It sounds a little bit, you know, like 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 the usual stuff you're saying. But discovering a place, discovering a terroir, and our brief was to try to make a wine that would be genuinely Californian, because there's no point in 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 sort of going to a place and try to ape another style, but still find the appropriate sites that would allow us to make a wine that would would be very typical Napa, but respect those qualities of European restraint as well. And the biggest surprise is probably that there are plenty of these sites if you go out and look out for them. Um, and, and, and I think, I think certainly 2018 as a vintage has helped because it's, you know, it was a late ripening, rather cooler vintage, but, but yes. I was quite, I was quite, uh, amazed to see how quickly we found i mean it's still a work in progress obviously and we're going to improve we're going to still further study the right places the right sites where to make a wine and 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 eventually also buy a vineyard certainly but mm -hmm. i was quite amazed to see how quickly we found we found sites that that, that allowed us to make the, the the type and the style of wine we we're looking for and so so these vineyards that you used were they um, vineyards already owned by the Dalla Valle or were they, um, were they, did you buy the fruit? Well, for the time being, we're buying fruit. We're buying fruit okay. and where we're trying to look at, well, the, the, the idea around the project is eventually having an own vineyard, but yeah. it needed to be something new. So we, we knew from the beginning, we would not rely on Dalla Valle's vineyard because it, 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 it it's a different project. So it needs to, sure. so that, there are various sites. There are sites that are close to the Della Valle winery in Oakville, but there are also sites in Mount Vida, in Coombsville, in cooler places. And we're still actively looking out for vignette sites. And once we'll find one that we fall in love with and that is going to be available, uh, we're certainly going to going to going to uh, own a vignette at some point. So, so is the um, AVA uh, for the wine just Napa Valley then? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because helps. it's sourced from different different places, different AVAs. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. In this stage, it's a little bit, I would say, just a discovery period. And so, you know, in choosing a vineyard, that's going to be quite final in a way. And so we wanted to really de work together and determine where it is exactly that we want to call home for DVO. And so it's great. It's kind of, it's fun because it's very different from, from what we do normally in our own estate. So, mm -hmm. so like, you can just pick the different puzzle pieces that you want to make to really create and express best what our both respective beliefs are in this collaboration. I think it's interesting because, uh, well, as you know, Ornelia has it um, has a history of of doing. Well, it did one joint 
well, joint venture, I guess. Well, it didn't really make a joint venture wine, but it had involvement with the Mandavis. And, right. and I remember very well that, uh, that um, Lamberto Frescobaldi told me, uh, and also Tim, for that matter, that they really enjoyed it because uh, it made them, you know, think of, about different things. And it wasn't necessarily winemaking, but it can be also philosophical and how you approach things. And so maybe you're already finding some things like that. Definitely. Yeah. But it's a journey that we're embarking on. Yeah. We're 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 on the last five years. <laughs> what was just that, out of interest? Why did you decide to not, uh, to not, uh, launch with the 2017 was that the first vintage then 17 17 was uh, we bottled we bottled the 2017 and we were very proud of what we bottled it was, a, it was very small it was about 200 pieces mm -hmm. and we thought that we wanted to really start on a on a stronger vintage so having knowing what the 18 was already and having 17 and 18 in barrel we made the conscious decision um, to to start with the 18 and just hold back on the 17, uh, okay. which ended up coming out because we would have launched it last year during during the pandemic. And I'm looking at the label. It says um, DVO. Is that actually the name, or is that just your the code for it? You haven't come up with the name yet. That's the name. Started as a code and it ended up uh, yeah. as being the name because, you know, after 10,000 brainstormings about a fancy name, uh, we ended up returning to the code and saying, you know, TVO, Dalla Valle on Elia, sounds like a good idea. So we kept it as simple as possible. So it's going to be, it's the name of the, of, of the wine, actually. Well, let's, let's try the wine. I, I have already tried it um, a couple times mm -hmm. now. But I think that, uh, and part of that is the, is the vintage, but because 18 made such balanced wines with very fine mm. tannins, but it really has that really beautiful length and, and freshness. And, uh, is, is that like, I, I don't think you're really trying to stylize things, but you know, it's very, let's say uh, typical for 2018. What, what were your goals as winemaker with this particular wine and, and what do you like about it? The difficulty is obviously, um, you know, dividing between uh, the vintage itself, as you very rightly say, because I think it, it, it's a vintage that had naturally um, a profile that was leaning towards freshness and balance. Mm. So, um, which is, which is, which is the type of wine we wanted, we wanted to achieve. I think, Probably the challenge in subsequent vintage is going to be to maintain that sense of balance and complexity. Um, maybe also in vintages that are not, you know, um, spontaneously going into that direction. But yeah, I think I think what we liked is uh, this contribution of cooler sides that give a lot of focus, a lot of freshness, without though. Um, Making a wine that would be too far away from a, from 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 the profile of an apple wine. So there's mm. also the ripeness of fruit. There's a nice full texture to it. So that to us was important, not to you know sort of make a a a, 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 a fake European style wine, but it mm. needs to be clearly Napa, but with this twist of you know this beautiful, uh, I think aromatic refinement and this 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 uh, sense of balance without being a, a light or an underwhelming wine because there's all the the the, the napa richness to this to this bottling as well i think yeah i would say i mean that this was the second year working with these sites so we had a better handle and understanding of, of the vineyards um having gone through one vintage and um particularly with the mountainous sites um, our approach was to, to be a little bit softer in extraction and fermenting, like doing things like fermenting at a lower temperature and just having a, a longer, more natural, stable fermentation and be very gentle and hands-on with it. And I think that, um, rewarded us very well in the back end in the wine. I feel like it, you, you have that like the firmness of mountain tannins, but you don't have the rusticity and they're still very refined and very elegant. 
I think we're very happy with that. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I, I remember that you that you guys were looking for um, mostly mountain vineyards, and uh, the wine has that uh, that character. But mm. it is it's really fine tannins though, and no uh, rustic character. And uh, but you know, really together with integrated tannins and very precise, uh, beautiful length. In fact, I'd argue that like the 18 DVO is probably more refined than Ornelia. Ornelia can be <laughs> quite a big wine. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's oh, different, pretty, different. Yeah. yeah. But but also a different place too. Like obviously we know where Ornelia is on the coast, and it's hardly mountain fruit, and where Della Valle at the same time is. So uh, it's really a you know a, a three different wines really, um, and I think that's exciting. What's what sort of production? How, how many bottles did you make of this wine? This is about this is four hundred cases of twelve. Okay. And when will it be on the market? So it, we plan on releasing it. We're doing a pre-release in uh, May, June, and then they'll okay. be shipped in the fall. And then in the fall is when um, we're working. We're working to make you know connections with our key top retailers from our both you know our respective top retailers, and, um, making a small allocation available to them. I'm really impressed. It's it's a great um, start. Do you do you think that you'll uh, uh, release one day the 17, or you don't know yet? I think so. Yeah. Um, we 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 like the wine. We like the wine. Um, it's it's an even smaller quantity, obviously, also linked to the vintage than uh, than uh, than 18. And as we all know well. Um, most of the wines and the fruit were saved from from wildfires, but not all of it. So that's another element which made us make far less wine than we than, than we thought. But the wine the wine's great. It would be a shame not to do something yeah. with it at some point. But you know, when you have only three thousand bottles, you have to think well what and how you're going to release them. But the the we we love the wine, so so there's no reason to at some point not uh, do something with it. And what about, uh, and so then you made 19, and then what happened with 2020? Because, you know, with all the pressure from the fire and it's a big disaster, right. did you make some? We made a little bit of 20. Okay, um, good. We're just evaluating, I mean, at Dolla Valley, we made a full vintage, and then um, good. DDO, we were more... Uh, just due to certain sites being very close proximity to the fires, um, we decided to let it go. But there was other sites that we we worked with and made wine from. And um, unfortunately, Axel hasn't had a chance to come over to taste them yet. But um, so far, I'm we're very happy with yes. with how they're tasting and in evaluation. And we'll just continue to evaluate them closely and and then make a decision. You know. We still have uh, some time before we decide. And I forgot to ask. Um, I've forgotten. Is is it a blend or is it a pure cabernet? There's a little bit of cab franc in it, um, but varietally, it, it's predominantly cabernet sauvignon. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Um, wow, that sounds uh, really exciting. What percentage would you say of it of the wine is um, sourced from uh, mountain areas? I would say it's about half. Well, yeah, it's half. Yeah, is yeah. It? Well, there still is, and I think that's that's really it's been a little bit also a stylistic consideration. I mean, all mountain fruit would maybe um, have been a little bit excessive. So there are some sites which is very classical, you know, Oakville probably would qualify, you know, as bench land you know very typical oakville cabernet sauvignon just to give you know that base of, of of fullness of richness so so it's really a combination of the of the different elements okay and so it's not necessarily let's like how mountain or or like maya Comas or it's it's not a particular um mountain area you you're still pretty flexible or you're working with the same vineyards every time i i think i think you know it's it's um 
we have uh, a clear idea what kind of wine we want to make. And there's going to be still a few years um, just exploring what type of uh, what type of terroir, what type of, 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 of sites are most suitable to make that wine. How is it going to evolve? Maybe it's going to narrow down to just a few sites because we will learn from experience that that's how we get the best possible wine, or maybe we'll keep it we'll keep it as broad as possible. It's it's a little bit hard to say honestly now. Okay. Um, it will require some experience. The good thing, and 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 that's been a surprise, but above all, a great satisfaction is that we were quite quickly um, able to make a wine that I think is both different from on a line from Della Valle. So it's not sort of, you know, yeah. um, and, and actually uh, we're, we're, I think we're very proud of that because that's what we wanted to achieve. Yeah. Um, and uh, with a, with a quite precise vision of what, 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 how, how is the wine supposed to look like? How is it supposed to taste like? Um, so, that is helpful because, you know, as always, when you make a wine, you have to sort of look to a reference. And the most difficult thing um, at an early stage is to build up that reference. If you, you know, if you come to make wine at Onelaya, as, as was the case for me 15 years ago, it wasn't that difficult because there was a range of great wines and vintages I could look up to. So it's very quickly, you at least get an idea what the wine is supposed to look like. Uh, but in this kind of case there was no reference and i think we we're quite quickly able to build up a real interesting reference to you know get the source of inspiration for subsequent vintages okay well listen uh thank you so much for the for the meeting and congratulations on the wine uh, and it, it really is a very complete wine with lovely integrity to it and length mm -hmm. and um you're so right that the 18 vintage certainly helped with that but also it shows a really um beautiful sensibility and polish and refinement particularly for your uh, mm -hmm. first wine so uh, congratulations on that and i look forward to um seeing you all uh either in napa tuscany or hong kong likewise yes yeah, look forward to being nice. able to travel yeah 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 so uh, also thanks for let's see staying up late I, all of you <laughs> and i'm glad we finally worked it out so thanks again and uh, yeah. it was really yeah. great to talk to you and love the wine so great we'll see you, you soon okay yeah. ciao, ciao. thank you james yeah see you soon <laughs>